ladies and Germans, Russians, and, you know, Reiter Jägers of all ages, I am Kamelberg. I'm Renru. Hello, hello, hello. And guys, again, continuing our coverage of the Orsha Cup, uh, we have ourselves a 1v1 over here on Slutsk. With all those lovely little bridges, Rang, who is fighting, though? Well, on the left-hand side, in blue, we have Curbs playing as 20th Panzer with balanced income, which quite surprised me, 20th Panzer. And right-hand side, we have Chicken Do playing as Group Bezulugo, and he has a Vanguard income. So, Bezulugo, we've seen those guys once or twice. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, in you know a sentence or two, what should we be expecting? Uh, it's a lot of basic Russian stuff with some captured German equipment, such as Tigers. Okay. And tigers. So how's that going to match up against the 20th Panzer, though, is the question. Yeah, 20th Panzer, it's definitely more lighter armor. We've got, like, some Panzer 3s, a few Panzer 4s, the 1IS-2 that you can get. So uh, I'm really quite curious to see how Curbs is going to play us, as 20th okay. Panzer is definitely an A-phase, B-phase division, with how it's, like, t cards are set up. So let's let's see how he works his way into the later stages of the matches. Twenty Panzer is you know, one of those mad divisions that just has a hard time when C face hits. That's true, but we do have the early boy to stall and, and and look over here at Pizuglico. He does not have anything in the area to remotely match up to it. Yeah, yeah, that Stalin is going to be a huge powerhouse. The, yeah, the Tigers pretty much lose to it. His best bet is really SU one two twos with the heat shells. That's that's really it, and even if the heat shows, you have a hard time penning as yeah, I'm looking at like that. 160 on 160 armor. Yeah, so it's it's a really a very much a tough call there. Mm -hmm. You just have to shoot it in the flank, I guess. Uh, and I don't know that Curbs is gonna let his his stuff get shot in the ass. He's not he's not really that kind of player. <laughs> um, but we are actually all going going to see a very early anti-air piece over here from Curbs as well. I kind of like that. Um, I said this in the last game, too. Very often we see a lot of early airplane play, and unfortunately for so many players, I feel like the game is won and lost in effective use of air power. This game even more than SD1. Yes, I'd, I'd agree with you in that run. And even though it's hard to justify getting, you know, spending like 70, 80 points on anti-aircraft gun early on, even like two in this case of of curbs, it's not a bad idea, especially it not even not even at the start of the match, but just in like the first few minutes or so, because those strafing runs will kill you. They're really really scary when a fucker wolf just fucking comes down on you. True, and if you really want to know what we're talking about with there, come check out the Tuesday game because that will have you on the edge of your seat. You will think one thing's there, it will not be there. Odin Machiki opening to the north, though. In fact, we're going to have two IG-18s that have to push this back with one lone squad of Pigrens. Oh, no, off Claire. Okay, even worse. Um, This is a tall order. Oh, wow, never mind. Good lord. Underground. Oh, supporting fire from the P3. Yeah. And, yeah, the Odin Machiki is pretty much caught in the open. So you can do is trying to throw the smoke, but... That's, uh, it's, it's kind of working. It's at least buying them time to bring strong DP as well as his fire support vehicles onto the northern hill. Mm -hmm. And now he's bringing some Sapari and Rizdevka. Dude, it's just a little bit south of that northern town. The south of that northern town. Yeah. Very, very true. Now, kind of funny that that T6 Tiger, uh, I, I'd find it almost humorous that the boy to Stalin and a Tiger faced off. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I would pretty much know which way that, that match probably should go from mm -hmm. a point perspective, um, even though it would kind of make me want to cry. Oh, yeah. God damn, the Panzer Free just got yeeted out of existence by the 122. Yeah, that's going to be oh, a wow. really deadly, like, hill. Yeah, uh, Curbs is going to have to deal with up north. Because his only real heavy tank is at IS 2. Puff me out, it's just Panzer 4s and, like, some Pack 40 guns. I mean, they can deal with those tanks for sure, but it's a little bit, a little bit tougher, especially when they have the high ground. You know, one thing I never really noticed about the Slush Troopin is that they have a cargo space of light. Yeah, yeah, they've been, um, you know, in the gym. They also have models of cocktails now, which is awesome. Yeah, which is why I took a look at that in the first place. I saw the whole light thing. I'd never seen that before. One of them, to use your terms, got yeeted out of existence by uh, TNT, which is why you mm -hmm. don't bring nitroglycerin to an explosives fight. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I confess, I feel like that town fight in the south, this is the thing to watch. Yeah, Regal. 
You know, a few T-34s and the Panzer free from curb, so he does need some more infantry as he's having a little bit of a hard time. The Panzer free is actually a pretty good infantry support tank as it shoots rather fast and does 2 damage HE compared to the 1 damage of regular uh, like tanks. So that should help out with dealing with the sap arrays and all of that. The unfortunate thing I think for the, actually Kerbs' troops as T-34s have decided that they cannot fight the motherland and have just like kind of given themselves over completely. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Chicken Dews guys, they prove that there's nothing foul going on with them and uh, they're able to shoot straight and get a lot of kills here. Yeah, yeah, and looking all the way down south, we've got the Aftima Cheekies clearing out the German infantry and going to be capping. You had to flag easy peasy like IS-2 is making its way along the middle area of the map along the hill and he is just blowing up strokey dp easy peasy true he is already at a 12 7 ammo which is not surprising right there mm -hmm. um wait i think it's at 300 coming in so it's not it's barely anything it feels like yeah maybe we can ask the poment if he has any it's 240. oh okay thank you oh yeah duh. we can stop up the, the unit card oh yeah 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 i do this for a living uh, P3, in the meantime, up north, he continues, actually, the replacement, uh, P3. Spalling, he's taking out the 122. Oh, what? gun jammed, oh my god. That could have been... Oh my gosh, that could have been uh, the biggest kill ever for that, on the SU-122. Uh, but that's a fantastic 45 mil position from Chicken Dudes. That just shuts down the reinforcement road. And Curbs is bringing in some 45 mils of his own. Both both sides really love using the other guy's equipment. Now what we do see is the first uh, anti-aircraft really being done here, of course, by actual fighter planes. I mean, 109 might buy it, but two stars are the two, you know, Iron Crossies. He's a double ace. He's going to get out. No! <laughs> Over on bite to dust. Uh, yeah, yeah, poor guy there. Uh, but the thing is, let's think about this. Even if Chicken Do takes a bit of an advantage here, he's only getting weaker, and Kerbs is only getting stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So, here's the question. Is the 20th Panzer really getting overmatched, or are they holding their own successfully? <sighs> he's doing, I mean, he's doing pretty good. I mean, it's not surprising to be losing in a phase, especially when your opponent has 50% more income mm -hmm. than you. But once again, in terms of just unit amount in terms of cards that you can get you really do run out by C phase so I'm, I'm really curious to see because a lot of those tank cards you get are like A and B phase exclusive they can I think get like a few pounds of force on C phase if I recall but, but yeah we'll just have to see it go maybe he's focused a bit more on anti-tank weaponry I, I confess I'm also watching as his P3 kind of very nervously moves about this town and the boy to Stalin just kind of goes north and south kind of like Jaws just looking for prey do, do, do. Um, oof. The Northern Push, you mentioned it before, I have that 45 coming on in, the 45 mil from the Germans. I don't know if that's going to arrest the uh, momentum of this attack, though. With a KV-1 up front, a, the Tiger behind that, and an SU-122 behind that. There isn't really much of the infantry nearby, so I'm wondering if the pack gun can shoot at the tanks without being spotted. Well, it might be able to, but now, as we have discovered on Tuesday, we have ourselves efficient shot being turned on there. The Flammenwerfer squads have decided to do the whole Mysterio proof of smoke thing. <laughs> I wonder where the Flammenwerfer squads are. Hmm. Yeah, you wonder about the sense of that, but, uh, oh well. Yeah. We do yeah, have how two... not to be seen. Exactly, you know, I was actually going to make a comment about that, but I'm, I'm happy to know, you know, the classic's still up there in the, the Canadia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have two long barrel P3s coming on in, so these guys might have the opportunity to kind of force back what's existing over here. For the Soviets, I would not be too confident, though. No. Yeah, this is it's sort of a very good push here from Chicken Do. Exactly what he needs to do in this initial A phase is grabbing a lot of territory. It's not exactly, it's not a lot of flags up here, unfortunately, yo. Especially on this map, it's a bit more spread out, but he he is still getting those victory points. Okay, gun jammed in the 122, <sighs> and the KV-1 and loader is wounded, and it's bailed out. Damn! Oh yeah, the Panzer Free has those lovely APCR shells, so... And some good hits, and the pack gun, the 45mm, is going at it, but it does, does bite the dust to machine gun fire. Yeah, which you kind of expect it to be fair. Now, we are mm -hmm. going to see reinforcement coming over here to the north. More Stroke DPs, not the Machiki or two. 
And there were a couple of tanks I could have sworn I'd seen. There we go. Yep, still come down the road. But I'll, I'll repeat the question I just had. Is this an acceptable level of losses for yeah. curbs? I'd say so, I'd say so. Once again, 50% income disparity between both sides. You can you can afford to lose a little bit up north. It's not too bad to take back this northern area, I'd say. Uh, not for nothing as well. We are going to see that um, duel that I was worried about seeing. We have the boy to Stalin facing off against the Tiga. <laughs> and the IL-2 will cause it to freak out, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. Oh, not not the typical IS versus Tiger fight that your guys are used used to seeing. <laughs> well, it's like oh. one of those things you can kind of imagine the guys going through that duel. Like, wait, no, that's not ours, right? Right, right, right. Right, <laughs> right is, well, Hans, is 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 that our Tiger? Oh, that must have been bizarre when engagements like that actually happened. Well, I, all I keep thinking of stuff like Rommel at one point in North Africa being in like a captured. Oh, yeah. Like Matildas and stuff like that, and be like, haha, you're a Matador. Not prisoner. I'm sorry? Because Rommel used to say, uh, like a Matador, like a Mammoth. captured British Mammoth. Mammoth, there we go, using that as his command vehicle. So it's definitely pretty funny when your commanding officer is using, you know, captured equipment. It's a bit of a political thing behind it or whatnot, but uh, not nonetheless. The statement, nonetheless? Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah. Shooter killed, hey, another tank shoots at another one on the bounce. So the reinforcing T-34s, despite being, are they a later model? Yeah, they're a year later, but uh, a year late and a dollar short, kind of sounds like. And we're on the brink of going into phase B as Curves just throws in the last of his airsuch troop and just, just kind of arrest and maybe reverse the ridiculousness coming towards him. Yeah, it's still a good play if his T-34s hitting, hitting the flank. Almost as good as his P-3s. I didn't realize that P-3s could theoretically kill that Tiger. From the, from the front, even. So one of them does die. Shooter killed, though, so this could be... Okay, never mind. I thought we were going to yep. see a little more of a uh, hefty amount here. Yep. With a regular AP, they only do 100 mil. Yeah. Penetration, which is a little, a little bit a little bit tough for, for the P3 zero, but they can stretch out and do critical hits on the Tiger, which is pretty good. And gotta remember, there's only two Tigers you have to worry about. Obviously, they're done. Not really many heavy tanks from Bezalugo. Out, uh, by the way, I'm assuming that that tiger over here for Bazooklago is dead. I think the IS-2 did in fact kill it. But the transmission I, is damaged yeah. and the shooter is knocked out, so... You know, six of one. Yeah, the IS-2's been uh, taking a lot of punishment. Probably close to death in terms of HP points. You know, P3s, we, we make fun of them, but really, that was a supremely f effective tank. And you have to give them credit. Those guys were the workhorses for the first two, three years of the war. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic little medium tanks for, like you said, the early years. And they're honestly not that bad. The nice thing is Trinity Panzer is you get, like, like five of them or whatnot with two stars. Veteran C, which is a fantastic card efficiency for two star Veteran C. And with the APCR cells, you can, you can penetrate Tiger tanks in this instance. Unfortunately for him, he's run out of APCR up north, so he can't really do too much against Tiger. He does have, I mean, if Pack 43, so that's kind of, you know, is the ultimate problem over, and the Tiger does go down. The IL-2 in the meantime, I wasn't even seeing that at the moment, but the IL-2 went again after the point of stall, and so the transmission is damaged, the engine is damaged, there was a stall just now, there was a crew panic, Oh, and the P3 down to the south is a P3N. It's basically an infantry support variant. Um, held the line bravely and died just as bravely, but uh, not before he lost his transmission. Then the transmission was damaged, and then he died. Yeah. It's always so. transmission problems. It's always transmission problems. Yeah, you know, it's not something I've really kind of thought, thought about, but you're absolutely right there. Mm -hmm. Like, I really wish I could, you know, sing the praises of the mechanical engineering behind it, but let's let's be fair, it was pretty shit for the Eastern Front. Um, more p grants moving in, more T-34s moving in, and we have these P-4s, these F-1s. Very bizarre silhouette card, uh, but this is the Assault Gun variant, so this is kind of like, not I want to say a grill, but I would say almost loosely towards that, would you say? Yeah, yeah, I think that's not a bad assumption. I mean, the nice, the nice thing about these support gun uh, 75 mil tanks now. So they they got bloody twelve rounds a minute. They shoot really fast for a HE damage of two. So you can just you can 
really mess up infantry in town. And they also have those heat shells allowing them to do 100 millimeters of penetration, which isn't, you know, that's not bad. No, not at all. Now, the one thing I always do hate about Curves uh, with the 20th Panzer is that he does not have AT on those Pegrins. Oh, yeah. That will yeah. always hurt me on the inside. It's always, it's always a tough, tough call to make, to be entirely honest, because you get more of them when you don't take him with the Panzerfaust, but at the same time, those Panzerfausts are pretty useful. They're, they're pretty they're pretty nice to have. But at the same time, too, you don't get a lot of infantry guards with 20th Panzer, so it's, it's about that efficiency. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's a tough call, but... Yeesh. Uh, this... Boy, to Stalin, I have to see his kill record because he just killed another T-34. He's going to kill another one in a second here. Even with his legs broken, his you know entire hull just abused by shells, he will get another kill. Just you watch. One shot. Oh, wow. Okay, well, never mind. I was going to say one kill. But he has to go make me into a liar. The fool. No. Very, very rude. Yes. Yes, and down south, the Germans have been kicked out of the town, finally, at long last. Um, and indeed, we actually have one stealth trooper over here who has no more Molotov cocktails. And I can't help but feel that he's going to be joining the ranks of the dead pretty darn soon. Yeah, we got your Strafniki finally being brought in, and they are always a really tough infantry squad to run up against. Yes, they are. Almost as bad as when you have a tank that's, you know, maybe 50 meters from your little uh, emplacement. Mm-hmm. Pretty damn rough, I would say. Yeah. Yo, oh, Curbs, this man's who bring it back, uh, flag rise, 14-10, so he's slowly in the victory again. Oh, air 2 on the IS-2, and it finally dies. Press, can we can we get an F in chat, or F in the comments, <laughs> for the IS-2, the pointer? Indeed. Do. I'll try and do the, uh, like, the American trumpet thing. Oh, I forgot, I forgot the tune. Taps. <laughs> No, seriously, that's exactly what's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, please, please. Yeah, it's just... Thank you. Thank you for your musical rendition, Khan. Well, you know what? I'm a drummer, and I don't read notes, but I know that one. Um, at best, I can give you rhythms. Um, now, we have this kind of weird tank company starting to form here in the kind of south-central part of the German lines. Two T-34-42s, and then two P-4s. So the funny thing for me is that the T-34s, I feel like, are meant to walk, point, and get hit. Because they have the thicker skins. Yep. But at the end of it all, I don't know if that's really what you want to have happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the P-4s are definitely the better match against uh, Chicken Dude's T-34s. That's for sure. He's definitely maybe spread out his tanks a little bit. They're a little bit bunched up. I'd have to say. We also finally see some artillery curves bringing out as 100 millimeters. They also have AP shells. Ooh, yay. Damn, that's, that's a really that's a really scary it's AP It's aimed for the ZIS-3, so we have an artillery duel. Oh, yeah. As we were having an artillery duel. I think 100 millimeters pretty much win, win that engagement. Oh, you know what? The, no, actually, no, the ZIS-3 is actually engaging that uh, T-34. Oh. So, you know what, uh, Comrade Stalin don't care exactly what you have done in former life, we kill you anyway. Yes. Pin down. Yes, Khan. Yeah, my, my Comrade accents Khan. are awful. Comrade Khan. <laughs> Comrade, Comrade Khan. Why have we never come uh, up with yeah. that name before? It's too easy. Uh, in the meantime, there's some, another couple of, actually, a lot of reinforcements coming here to the center. Sturm Pioneers moving in to consolidate the town in the south. Call it P Grun squads. Where are they going? Uh, to consolidate the central part of the map. I think I think Curbs has, has gotten out of the woods here. He's got the income. In, he's got. I really do think the infantry fight for this as well. Yeah, yeah. He's got the Stern Pioneers. I mean, uh, yeah, Stern Pioneers with the Harsh Rikes definitely help out quite a bit. Hopefully, he stops pushing with his T-34s in the center a little bit, wait for infantry to come up. Because if they go a bit closer, they're probably going to get. Yeah, uh, ATs rifled by a stroke DPs. Oh god, I've seen enough PTRSs PTR, and PTR PTRDs for this week. Mm. It is so weird to watch the 20th Panzer basically be the, you know, German version of Bazooklego. This is this is the Pioneers with SVTs, this is like, we've yeah. seen T-34s the entire time. Are tanks and Are there equipment. PPSs someplace in here? Soviet, uh, Stormtroopers. Uh, the Stoss Troopers, yeah. 
I think that's a very good. That's a that's a pretty good analogy, Khan. That's a pretty good like. They're both so similar, so different. <laughs> Two sides of the same coin, some would say. Yeah. Uh, Zuko go though not going down without a fight, bringing in an Su-76 as a proper artillery piece, as well as some anti-air to kind of back it up. Now, these are still the kind of rinky-dink 37 mils, but we have seen that 37 mils can be very deadly. Um, I certainly against infantry, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you got the Pioneer SVT is being brought into a fantastic unit because I think those Germans are probably very happy that they got semi-automatic rifles. Yeah, well, they kind of want to see more of the G43s. Like that was a mechanical rifle, mm -hmm. very solid, very dependable, and I'm pretty sure they used a lot more of more of them than, but most games tend to give credit. I think I think the Hungarians took them all. I'm not sure if you're being joking or you're being I'm, serious. I'm both. 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 Just like because all the Hungarian infantry, all the cavalry Hungarian infantry have so many G43s. It's like you think the Germans would get first first dibs, but no, no. Uh, there is this one IL2 that's been coming in every couple of minutes, almost without fail. He's desperate to push back. These G3442s that are supporting attack on the town with the Pioneer SVTs. I don't think the Russian defenders can hold them back. I L two strike I don't or think not? So. Yeah, those those Pioneer SVTs are just scary, scary to do with. So they're gonna clear out the town easy peasy in the tanks port. Oh, here we go, Messerschmitt. There's a four ten. One's going after the anti air piece, but I think it's a great call. Mm -hmm. But he's he's gonna go down. Oh. It's so weird how airplanes now actually do a pretty decent job. Against enemy anti-air. I mean, it didn't completely suppress it because they've been nerfed a bit. But it, especially considering you know the SD44 days, where you just don't you don't you don't hit artillery, anti-aircraft artillery with planes because that's just suicidal. Unless you're B26 Marauder. Um, yeah, yeah, and you just strafe everything and win the match in the first 20 minutes because those Hellcats are just zipping and zooming. Oh god, that that was that, that was, was awful to play against. It was awful, yeah. Yeah, I think I think we even like I I know when the four farm was just completely broken. I think we both kind of made a pack like okay, we're just not going to cast any four farm matches because it's just the same thing every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was unfortunate too because it was such an interesting division. It was just really, really not fun to play against. <laughs> it was piss poor balance for the first few months. And then they nerfed the stewards to oblivion, and yeah, all was restored. Good. Yeah. But uh, where we had the Germans rocked on their heels, they have now consolidated. We are in phase C. This is exactly what they wanted to wait for. Now we have P3s engaging, T-34s from long range. We have infantry piercing deep into the Russian positions. Um, honestly, there's two T-34s that are protecting the artillery park, and that's it. In fact, we have a, a P-Grand who might even get close enough to engage it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's really sneaking in. Behind the lines, and it's this northern puss has gone pretty pretty well from curves. He's got that northern hill under his control. I don't think he's really going to be able to push much further. Just it's a lot, a lot of Soviet T-34s here. Unless he gets the Pack 43 up and running that thing, and be the equalizer. Now, now, part of the map, so to speak. Yes, it will. Oh my gosh, it's so almost it's it's hauntingly delicious to see that 230 penetration. I know, it's... The nice thing about, like, I find, like, Pack 43s and national ones is that it's pretty... It's not useless, but it's pretty unnecessary to really ever take them vetted. Because you already got, like, 60% baseline accuracy. You don't really need to be that more accurate. You're gonna, you're, you're, you're gonna hit regardless, it feels. Yes, you are. Now, we do have 145 mil on the center part of the map. What's he still engaging? Is he engaging those P4s? I'm not sure what he's engaging. Yeah, I think it's like the P, yeah, the P4s. And the only thing I can think of. More Pioneer SVTs. We have we have an FU H. Uh, excuse me. An, well, I call it an FU18. Uh, but we have an FH18 coming on the 150 mils, and the 100 mils SK18s have a fair amount of shells. I'm surprised they're not continuing to fire for effect. I would be aiming for that northern bulge, those T34s, pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Alas, he is not. 
No, he is not. Nor does he really need to. He's getting that slow bleed. Yes, it'd be nice to get more than that, but, you know, it's not terrible. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm quite surprised how well he's actually doing. It doesn't seem like he's really ran out of tanks yet or stuff. He's actually bringing a bit more infantry and actually bringing out quite a lot of leader units. More than anything, it's probably a pretty good call. For curbs. You mean curbs? Yeah, curbs. Yes. Yep, yep. And I uh, bring in some more artillery, 150 mil, and, and then the artillery is definitely making a huge difference, especially especially German artillery to get all those lovely corrected shot bonuses. Yes, they do. Well, the power of radio. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what are you coming in? I mean, 109. It's a couple of ground positions. He's going. Okay, he's going for the IL2. The IL2 has bedeviled his troops for long enough. And kills the Recon P3. <laughs> he won't be seen much anymore. Oh, yay, yay. God damn, is this Messerschmitt going to come around and kill the IO? I don't I don't think so. Uh, no, I think, maybe. We'll, I think we'll get it on, on a second run here. One more mm. run, he'll get it. There's no AA to, to really oppose him. The nearest AA piece is... Wow, that is a long turn, though. Good lord. Yeah. He also went out really early, too. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Oh, we have Strafniki and a Panzer Grenadier Fuhrer running into each other. This is going to be an awful, awful <laughs> meeting of the minds. And a 40, a T-34 <laughs> says, yeah, we don't worry about that. Khan, I heard you really were looking forward to that fight, mano y mano, and we take it away. Oh, anti, it's, it's an anticlimactic light down. Yes, it is. And SC-76 is now dueling with the 100 mils. Um... Looking at the relative explosions between them, I would not want to be the SU-76. I wouldn't want to be either. And the SU-76 is not getting much accurate fire on those no. 100 mils, that's for sure. Uh, and also, wow. There's a P-34, a P I said P-34. There was a P-4 that uh, lost its crew. The plot truck brought it back in, and he is just doing a great job here. Run south, just north of the river. Yes, yeah, sir. We'll just claim yep. a T-34, and it's going to claim this KV-1. Just you watch. Watch me eat my words. Yep, that was delicious. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sorry, Colin. That's okay. Uh, besides, there's still this German Kampfgruppe coming under the center. We have a couple of Panzers. We have ourselves a Recon Panzer. We've got a couple of P-Grens. This takes, us, takes me back. This does go back to the whole... Uh, SD kind of comp group them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just bringing out all those, all those reinforcements. So, goddamn, Chicken Dudes has a really nice position on that middle hill. It was T 34, it's getting high ground and all, but uh, yes. the, P the P3s being brought in via PCRs, not going to have a good time. Yes, also the P Grand, as well as, you know, P3, P4. We have the pack 40 ready to kill anything that comes to the breakout. I mean, it's good for now, but I think it's more because Kerbs has not deigned to kill them yet. Yeah. Got a lot. That's a lot of Stafniki up north, I just realized. Uh, every Everything up north is just a penal squad. Can you say that on a, a cast? The, the word? That word? Penal? Penal? Yeah, it uh, just means. <laughs> I know. <laughs> IG-18's being brought on in as are two more P4s, so yeah, you know, I you said about 20th Panzer running low on armor, I feel like every single time we think he's out of armor, he brings in more of it. Yeah, I, I feel like he's probably starting to scrape a little bit of the barrel now, in terms of armor, because he's been bringing out quite a lot of units, and also high veterancy as well, which definitely doesn't help the availability game, but he has been using them efficiently. Which is what matters in the end of the day. This is silly, by the way, maybe to note, but I do like when people bring in armored vehicles in pairs. Yeah. It's a small thing, but I appreciate the attempt to kind of have this covering idea. Mm -hmm. Just like bringing in three SU-76s with the point and shoots. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a disposable camera there if I've ever seen one. <laughs> uh, I do think the IG-18s, though, all things I mean... considered, are... A good indication yep. that, yes, the bottom of the barrel is being touched. You're right about that. God damn, that's all I'm going to think of when I see SU-76 PT point and shit. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I mean, think about it. It's yeah. like, okay, maybe it, gets, maybe it gets developed, maybe it doesn't. We don't know. 
<laughs> We're on all for 35 points, you can't go wrong. Exactly. Uh, P3Ms and the P4 backing it up to try to engage that last uh, 42. There's an awful lot of ground fire. I, I, I'm really surprised if he gets off another round. Slight damaged. And a kill. Yep. This position is going to get overrun within the next two minutes. Well, when it, when it comes to Panzer IVs versus T-34-76s, Panzer, Panzer IVs usually win. What I am fascinated about is this southern tank and uh, Strafniki pillbox that's going on here. He is calmly taking out squad by squad, but to what end? I mean, we have a, a Shrek squad coming on in, and that's great and all that, but look how far he's got to go to get any sort of actual victory pointage. What's a kilometer to the west? Yeah, you're not oh, going to yeah. break out. You really aren't going to break that out. That's not going to happen. Well, that KV one's just going to be chilling out, yeah, really most of the time. Just also, taking off some pioneers. The IL-2, I think, is finally done. There's three freaking ME-109s going after it. Yeah, he's... He should die now. If if the 109s and 410s can actually get behind him. Well, here's one of 109. Uh, Lorman is very calm. And Hayes and... Gottstein... Schoenstein, yeah. Schoenstein. Hey, he's, he's, he has to be dead. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. There's really no way he can survive that. Yeah, no. as a 37 mil being brought in and immediately watch an immediate unload. <laughs> no, okay. Nope. Too late. Um, but yes, there we go. Okay, so that southern push is pretty much deceased. Uh, troops are falling back in disarray. The only thing that's keeping them alive is that uh, the Sturm Pioneers and SVTs are taking some friendly fire. But a couple of Shreks moving on in. Yes, they're... Yeah. Be very surprised if you don't see a couple of quick kills on these tanks. Man, that's one That's one critical you don't want to get. You do not want to get that loader killed. No. I'll drive... I'll drive I guess drive a kill is not too bad if you can still shoot, but... You don't need to load those rounds in to protect yourself. Indeed. Indeed, and at this point, Bazooklago doesn't have nearly anything left. Yeah, he's just ran all his SU-76s in the middle into that Panzer IV Kampf group, and... I didn't, you know, I didn't even watch them all die, but I feel like this last one's going to die very quickly, and yep. Yeah, yeah really, really good pushback here from, from Curbs overall, just... You know, once you dealt with that annoying A-phase A -phase threat of those Tigers and whatnot, he's managed to mop up the floor of most of... Well, Zoogle goes tanks and you know, just decent job of infantry playing artillery. And with that in mind, we are going to see Chickadoo has suffered a little bit of friendly fire there, but that's okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but you know, you know, it's very difficult, very very difficult to say that that was going to be Kirk's game from the get go. Mm -hmm. Did not seem that way. Same, especially especially running twentieth Panzer of balancing comet is I still I still find it bizarre, but it worked out, so I'm sure it really matters. Indeed. But you know what? Looking at the other side, uh for the most part, one T thirty four is clearly a traitor against the motherland, taking out it's a fair share of vehicles. Um and that packet forty three you were talking about takes out the tiger and two thirty two T thirty four seventy sixes. There are a couple of minor standouts, really, for both sides, but all things considered, no one who's like a god. Oh, I do want to see the IL-2. IL-2, okay, get the boy to stall in the P3. I feel like he got a lot more than that. No, it's mainly more suppression. Indeed. All right, but with that in mind, well done to Curbs, unfortunately, for Chicken Do. Mm -hmm. Really good match. Really, re really nice scene. Just, he's both, both really ranked activism. Let's just go at it. Those weird captured equipment. Yes, indeed. Oh, but you know, it's always a fun day. It's mm -hmm. always a fun match. And that was definitely one more fun than most, I would say. Indeed, indeed, indeed. All right, folks, with that in mind, I think our coverage for the week has come to a close. As always, if you like what you see, hit like and subscribe below. Comment, do any kind of thing you want to see there. 
And if you have a replay you want us to check out, either hit me up or hit up Rang, either on Discord, on here. Uh, we are very easy to get in touch with. But, until next time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rang Roo. Take it easy.